Employee Benefits and Deductions What are employee benefits? So employee benefits include different kinds of non-wage compensation given to employees in addition to their regular wages or salaries. What are some purposes of employee benefits? So benefits increase the economic security of employees and improve satisfaction and therefore retention in the company. Businesses use benefits also to attract new employees and give current employees a greater sense of job satisfaction. Employees of a company generally share the same basic benefits package although the amount may vary depending on an employee's position or length of service. Most kinds of employee benefits are taxable to at least some degree. How do we classify employee benefits? Employee benefits can be classified as either those which the employer must provide by law, so they are called government mandated benefits, or those which the employer offers as an option to compensate employees or what we call company initiated benefits. These basic employee benefits cover most occupations, agricultura, agricultural or non-agricultural. Okay, so let's talk about government mandated benefits. These benefits are classified into two, institutional and personal or individual. So for institutional, we have SSS here in the Philippines, Social Security System. So the SSS was created to provide private employees and their families protection against sickness, disability, and death. Now for the GSIS or Government Service Insurance System, the GSIS is an equivalent system for government employees. So for private, we have SSS and then for government, we have GSIS. Next, PhilHealth or Philippine Health Insurance Corporation. So PhilHealth is administered by Philippine National Health Corporation, which is designed to provide employees with a practical means of paying for adequate medical care in the Philippines. Okay, next, we have Pag-ibig Fund. So it's a... Provident Saving System providing housing loans to private and government employees and to self-employed persons who choose to join. Employers are required to contribute on behalf of their employees so in pag-ibig fund to this fund. Okay. Next, we have personal or individual government mandated benefits so number one we have 13 month pay so all filipino employees are entitled to a year end bonus equivalent to one month salary regardless of the nature of their employment the 13th month pay is to be given no later than december 24 of every year a worker is employed so that's for 13th month pay an example of personal government mandated benefit. Paternity leave. So what is this paternity leave? All legally married male employees are eligible for seven working days. Up to four childbirth or miscarriage of legitimate spouse to be availed within 60 days from delivery or miscarriage. So that's for paternity leave. So that's an example of personal government mandated benefit. Next, we have solo parent leave. Seven working days parental leave for solo parents who are certified by Department of Social Welfare and Development or DSWD. Next, we have service incentive leave. An employee who has worked for at least one year in a company is entitled to five days leave of absence 
with pay every year. If the employee doesn't avail of these paid leaves, the company may opt to have them do a mandatory leave of absence with pay or convert these unavailed paid leaves to their cash equivalents to be given at the end of each year. Okay, now for company-initiated benefits. Other company benefits that are not government-mandated but are usually given to employees are, number one, leaves. Example, vacation leave, sick leave, emergency leave. On top of the mandated service incentive leave, some companies give their employees additional paid holiday and vacation leaves. The number of days allocated for these leaves usually varies from company to company and might depend on the number of years the employee has been of service to the company. Next, performance-based increase. Number two, performance-based increase. This is given based on how well the employee works. Number three, bonuses. We have quarterly and mid-year. Holiday or Christmas bonus given in December. This is on top of the 13th month pay and is considered as the company's Christmas gift to its employees. Mid-year bonus. This is given in June when the country's school year starts. This is to assist employees in school enrollment fees for their children. Next, number four, we have allowances. So, an example of that is meal allowance and then transportation allowance. Some companies provide their employees with yearly rice, medicine, and clothing allowance. Offsetting and under time. Number six, we have loans. So loans are examples of company-initiated benefits. Financial loan, car loan, housing loan. Number seven, the minimis benefits. What are these benefits? The minimis benefits are those benefits of relatively small values given by employers to their employee on top of compensation. These benefits are not subject to withholding tax. The BIR or Bureau of Internal Revenue considers the following as the minimis benefits. So we have 10 days monetized, unused vacation leave credits, medical cash allowance to dependents of employees not exceeding 750 pesos per semester or 125 pesos per month. Rice subsidy of 1,500 or one sack of rice per month. Uniforms and clothing allowance not exceeding 5,000 per year. Medical benefits not exceeding 10,000. Laundry allowance of 300 per month. Employee achievement awards in the form of tangible personal property other than cash or gift certificate with an annual monetary value not exceeding 10,000 received by the employee under an established written plan. Flowers, fruits, books, or similar items given to employees under special circumstances, for example, on account of illness, marriage, birth of a baby, etc. Daily meal allowance for overtime work not exceeding 25% of the basic minimum wage. So those are the de minimis benefits. Now let's proceed to deductions. A deduction is an expense that is subtracted from the gross income. Wages and salaries being the compensation of employees for their hard work should not be subjected to deductions other than those authorized by law. No employer in his own behalf or in behalf of any person shall make 
any deduction from the wages and salaries of these employees except, number one, in cases where the worker is insured with his consent by the employer and the deduction is to recompense the employer for the amount paid by him as premium on the insurance. Number two, in cases where the right of the worker or his union to check off has been recognized by the employer or authorized in writing by the individual worker concerned. Number three, in cases where the employer is authorized by law or regulations by the Secretary of Labor and Employment. So there are two types of deductions, statutory deductions. Employers are required by law to compute and deduct amounts from the employee's gross salary on behalf of the government. These amounts include income taxes, SSS or GSIS contributions, Pag-ibig Fund, and PhilHealth. Next, voluntary deductions. These are deductions taken out of the employee's gross pay based on requests made by the employees themselves. This may include union dues, credit card union savings, mortgage, and insurance. 